Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video I'm going to go over the installation procedure of our DaVinci Color Panel for Loop Deck devices, the Windows version. Now this is version 2 of our popular color panel for DaVinci on the Windows system, and there are some significant changes, uh, some really big additions that we've made to it, and if you want to uh, see all of that and, and what has been included uh, by all means uh, check the link below for our navigation video where we run through each part of the pack but this one is designed for when you've downloaded the pack and you need to get everything working and get it all installed now the other big thing about version 2 is unlike version 1 version 2 most of the programming has been done for you already version 1 if you recall you uh, would need to set the coordinates for each of the parameters and you go through that 20 or 30 minute process and then it was done. Here we're able to have done that for you in advance. However, there are some specific setup guidelines that we've got here and we're going to go over them now. So the first thing we want to do, you've downloaded your Sideshow FX color panel file and inside you can see we've got all the icons packed into this folder here. But we've got uh, two different folders that you're going to be working with, depending on what version of DaVinci you're using, either the studio or the non-studio or free version. Now, if you uh, have forgotten whether you're running the studio version or not, or you're in a facility, you're not sure which one they're running, you go down to uh, DaVinci here. We're going to go up to DaVinci and click on About DaVinci Resolve, and if it says Studio, you're running the Studio version. Uh, if not, you're on the free version also as well. You can take a quick look here at the headers, and if you see Magic Mask here, then you know you're running Studio version. If there's no Magic Mask, you're on the free version. Okay? So, depending on which one you are actually using, you're going to work in that folder. Now, these folders are identical, except for the script that's included. So I'm working with the DaVinci Resolve Studio, so I'm going to be demonstrating it with the Studio. Like I said, it's, it's the same way with the uh, free version. So we'll double click, get into the Studio here, and you see it's three different folders, keyboard command, the Loop Deck profile, and a setup folder. So we're gonna to go to the setup folder first, and we've got two files in here. Uh, one is Color Panel Custom, and one is a Sideshow Effects Color Panel Studio, or if you're in the free version, it'll say Non-Studio. You're gonna take both these files, and you're gonna drag them into your Documents folder. All right? They're very small files, they'll go in there, but th this is the heart of our, of our pack, and that's where they need to go, the Documents. Okay? So, let's uh, step back out, and we're gonna go and load up the Loop Deck profile itself, and inside is just one profile. So we're going to launch Loop Deck, and we'll pull down on the main profile and go Import Profile, and we'll navigate to our downloaded folder where we just were into Studio or Non-Studio, whichever one you're working with, LD Profile, and we're going to double-click this to import it. And you'll see a pop-up box asking you to uh, asking you which application will be dynamically linked to this profile. So in other words, dynamic linking is whenever you start DaVinci or you make DaVinci in focus on your computer, this profile will be displayed on your Loop Deck device. Now, as of this recording, Loop Deck has an issue with recognizing the DaVinci Resolve application. However, if you select this Blackmagic proxy generator from this list, so you'll scroll down and you select Blackmagic Proxy Generator, this will work the same with DaVinci. Once this gets fixed, you would select the DaVinci Resolve application. All right, you can change the name if you want, doesn't really matter, and select OK. And once the import has succeeded, there you go, you're ready to go there. Now, there's a few things here we want to do. We're gonna go over to our, um, where your user uh, account is we're going to go to device settings and in this section under device configuration you want to make sure that MIDI is on okay so make sure MIDI's on and we'll say done and then we're going to go over to the plugin settings here and we're going to make sure that MIDI that this eyeball is on for the MIDI plugin we want to make sure that that is enabled okay and the third thing to do here 
is we're on the main page of our DaVinci Pro Color Panel profile. Let's just click once on the load panel and it will launch it over here. We need to navigate on this browse button to where we put that custom file in our documents folder. So we're going to go to the documents folder, we're going to scroll down, and we're going to select the folder we placed in our documents folder. I'm working on Studio, so it's obviously this IHFX Color Panel Studio. If you're on the free version, this will say non-studio. So you select that, and then you select save. So the next thing to do is we're going to go to our device and we're going to press load panel. You'll hear a beep. It'll tell you the color panel is running, but it's going to prompt you to select MIDI ports. So we're going to say OK. And then we're going to say OK again to launch the MIDI port selection. And if you don't see this dialog, by the way, by the way, at one point I didn't see this and I had to close a window and it was underneath. So just in case you don't see this, just it's probably underneath a window. So in the select MIDI input, click on loop deck CT, say done reload. And it tells you that it's running. And you'll see the red trackball icon down here on the system tray. And it's also active over here. Okay, so we know our script is now running. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to load the keyboard shortcuts. Most of what is in this pack is uh, MIDI driven. But there are a few commands such as what you see here on the screen. There's some uh, uh, add a parallel node, add, add a serial node. They're, they're shortcut driven. So we just want to make sure that you're loading in the key file that we're working off of. So in your Sideshow Effects pack, you can see there's a keyboard command file that is located here, version 5 Windows. And you would load that in by going to DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Customization, and then you would import the preset, navigate to that folder that you downloaded from Sideshow FX. And it doesn't matter in this sense, it doesn't matter um, non-studio or studio, but you might as well keep it the same. They are the same um, text file. And you would import that. I'm not going to do it because I already have it loaded here. So this is version 5. So you want to make sure you got that loaded and you press save. And uh, then your system is running the same shortcut file that we've built this pack off of. Now there's a couple other things we just have to make sure that we're doing to make sure everything lines up perfectly. So we're going to go over here to our workspace and we're going to reset the UI layout. Okay, and that just puts everything where we need it to be. Now there is one additional thing I want to point out, and this is a late addition that uh, we've included since we did this whole recording, and that is the addition of this reset UI button. Uh, as you've followed through in the PDF and in the installation video, it's important to make sure that you reset the UI layout so everything is in place to how we've written the script. And so we've actually made it uh, even easier for you just by hitting this reset uh, UI button. So if I was to change things here, uh, just add a few things. Actually, I'll turn these off. Now this is what you should do at the beginning of every one of your color sessions, just to make sure everything's lined up properly. Press the reset UI. It resets everything in DaVinci how we need to see it. Now there are a couple things you can change if you want. You can turn off clips and operate this way, everything is fine. You can turn off timeline, everything is fine, but don't turn off both. If you turn off both, the script is not going to respond. You'll press uh, keys on the device and they're not going to work. So you have to have either clips on or timeline on or both. And the other thing to keep in mind, we wanna make sure that our interface is not in an extended view such as this. We want to make sure that it's set this way. So this icon needs to look exactly like that in the split primary and secondary views. All right, and we can click on scopes, that's fine. We'll just work this way. I should also point out that you do need to be running a minimum screen resolution of 1920 by 1080. If you're using a screen resolution smaller than that, this expanded and compact view will not be adjustable. It'll always work in the expanded view and therefore some of the headers will not line up. So please keep that in mind. You need a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 at a minimum. So you have to operate it on this um, configuration. And the quickest way to do that, if you find things aren't working, just go here, press reset UI, and it resets back to um, where things like to be.
Now one last thing we want to make sure that we do to make sure everything lines up correctly. If you're using the studio version, this doesn't apply to the free version. If you're using the studio version, we're going to go up to File, go to Project Settings, and go into Color Management. We're going to turn on Dolby Vision, HDR 10 Plus, and HDR Vivid, and click Save. They will add these to the header tray, and it will push these down. We want to make sure that these always stay on here. That way our headers are all going to line up. If you need them off for whatever reason, if you go over the, the uh, Loop Deck device here, these headers would be misaligned. So when I click on these, uh, it might not open the color pane. All the other parameters, color parameters, will still work from this header down. These will all still work, but these will be misaligned. So just as a rule of thumb, even though you might not be using them, just have these activated on your system tray and you'll be fine. Now one other little gotcha you just gotta be aware of is you have to have either timeline or clips on. You can have uh, just timeline on or just clips on and it'll work just fine. If you have both timeline and clips off, it changes the UI ID and it kind of messes up the script and you'll find that the things don't respond. So you need to have one or both of these on at any time and then this is going to work the way you would expect. And you can just check the functionality, things work right away as you'd expect them to. So that's it, you're all up and running, everything's good to go. I encourage you to check out the navigation video so you can explore everything that's involved with this pack, everything you can do with it. And I hope it really helps you guys out with your, your, your color sessions. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.